Super, danke. Good afternoon and very welcome to the last day of this year's Berlinale Talents. We hope you already enjoyed some of our talks and some films in the festival. Maybe some of you have seen Gundar or other films and encounters and other documentaries here. We are very excited to have Viktor Kosakowski and it's my pleasure to introduce our moderator Jamila Granditz. So stage is yours, enjoy. Thank you for the welcome and the introduction. Um, it's my pleasure being here and give another warm welcome to Viktor Kozakowski, please. So we'll have a talk about non-fiction poems, about freeing dogs. Um, and I'll introduce to you once again Viktor Kozakowski, who began his career in the Leningrad Documentary Film Studio in 1978 as an assistant cameraman, assistant director and editor, and in 1988 he graduated from the Higher Courses for Film Writers and Directors Institute in Moscow. He's taken on the roles of writer, director, editor, and cinematographer in many films, and his international breakthrough, The Beloves, won the Jerry Stevens uh, Award and the Audience Award at the ITFA in Amsterdam. Since then, his work has continued to win numerous awards, and his um, last film, Aquarella, premiered in Venice in 2018, and his most recent film that we just heard about, um, Gunda, is part of this year's Encounters section here at Berlinale. Victor, um, non-fiction poems. What's your motivation um, to do non-fictional film and documentary? Hello, guys. Um, I, I would like you to, to give me a promise. Don't take me serious, okay? Whatever I would say, just forget it. I mean... Whatever I would say, it's just my opinion. I'm, I might be totally wrong. And I would say, as far as I know, many good, many filmmakers, some of them are good. And I believe uh, good filmmakers, very radical. I'm not sure I'm a good filmmaker, but I'm radical as well. So everything I would say, it's quite radical. So don't take it as a... Probably it's nothing to do with you. I, 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 believe, I believe the film, documentary film, first of all, is part of art. It's not journalism. I don't believe in documentary as journalism. So I, I can respect some people who do good journalism documentary, but it's nothing to do with me. I, I just simply don't understand. I don't understand films without artistic form. I don't understand storytelling. I just, if, you, if someone tells me that the, uh, filmmaking is storytelling, it's nothing to do with me. Uh, if you want to tell story, just write story or tell story. I just don't understand why to make movie. And so, as you see, uh, it's already a bad beginning, right? So, <laughs> that's what I'm saying. Don't listen to me so much. So, take it easy. Then I will tell you one more, maybe. Um, we all know that there are, like, what, what it means to have good film. It's like if we talk about fiction, documentary, it's the same. You have a good character, you have a good story, 
you have artistic form, uh, or let's say cinema language, and this is what normally people say what contains good movie. And in this case, I will believe something is missing. And what is missing is, for me, most important thing. These three components normally is what contains movie, right? Storytelling, language, your language, how you do movie, and character. But for me, it's missing most important element here, magic. And if there is no magic, I simply don't watch it. I watch five minutes, if I see someone editing pictures, I just simply don't watch it. So, do you understand? So, uh, what I'm, is, does it make sense for you? Yeah? That's why, <clears throat> thank you for writing such perfect, uh, perfect title for our talk, but I believe poems are, uh, in a way, cinema was born a single shot, right? Not like story. Might be inside this single shot there is story, but cinema was born a single shot. That's why I, I will stick with this, that in the beginning of cinema there is a shot. Then it might be story. So my last, last line for this talk, for the beginning is, so you're done already. <laughs> just one, just one more, and we're done. <laughs> I would say, cinema should not tell story. Cinema should show. Maybe story, maybe not. Cinema should show something. What you never seen before. Or what you don't want to see. That's maybe a good occasion to um, start with the very first clip from Aquarella. So let's show. Uh, can I ask you something? I'm not sure. Uh, I, I will explain you later why. Um, before we continue, can I ask you something? Do you remember this lady? Remember? Try to remember how she was dressed. Which one? Yellow jacket, what else? Blue jeans, what else? How blue, blue, blue warm or blue cold, how is it? Cold blue, what else? Black socks, what else? Was she, how about her hair? All right. Uh, to like ten years ago, some people asked me to make um, to take a class, five years class, and uh, to make to to teach in Saint Petersburg. And uh, um, as far <clears throat> so, I made like long, long selection. It was many people wanted to be student, and and uh, I made like four, four times, four days four days uh, selection and first day I was asking them to do something for me, uh, second day, third day, something artistic before I choose. Uh, and I did not illuminate anyone. It was like group 300 people and I need to take 10 and I decided not to illuminate anyone until the last day. And then the last day I came and I was talking to them one one hour or more, and then I said, I left, and I just asked, uh, I, I said to them, the student will be only person who will remember how I was dressed. So assistant came and said, you just have to uh, write how Victor was dressed, and no one, and no one was able to say it, even though, what color is my shirt. Uh, so, and I asked, I only ask, the color of the shirt and tie. And I was not wearing tie. And I, I normally wear in this kind of shirt, which is quite strange, right? So if you're blind, you don't see it. So, and then it happens that no one noticed. And then I said to the university, I cannot teach blind people to be filmmakers. <laughs> uh, 
Some people even do not know have color of mom eyes. Yeah, do you remember color of your mom eye? Shoe? Your shoe? Some people sitting here do not do not remember if the form of their watch. It sounds crazy, but it's true. Some people don't. So we, we see, but we don't see. And I believe filmmaking is um, like, do you know, like, can I give you a stupid example? Like football player, right? If he doesn't play every week, then he is sitting on the bench and waiting, he, he, and waiting because, and, and if journalist is asking the coach, why this guy is not playing, the coach says he has no experience. Filmmaking is the same thing, I believe. I live in an apartment, and on the top of me live the most, uh, one of the top five piano player of the planet. He is top five of the planet, and every day, I wake up from two hours a day. He's top five in the in the world. He is every day making exercise two hours. Just for you to know, filmmaking is the same. A football player is supposed to run every day. Piano player is supposed to play every day. And um, filmmaker need to look every day. This is what we have to do. And uh, have you ever been in Rembrandt house in Amsterdam? You are from Amsterdam, right? Young man, you are from Amsterdam, no? Are you? You are from Amsterdam, all right. Have you been there? Do you remember what he has in the house in the front of in, in his house and in the window? Do you, know, do you remember? Oh, man. The most important thing in his house is a chair in front of window. Nothing else there, it's kind of podium, and there is a chair. It's like beautiful big room, nothing there, just chair in the window. Uh, he was just sitting and watching. This is how you become a filmmaker. What do you want us to see? If you say it's about seeing, magic. if we talk about aquarella, for beauty, example. Beauty, beauty, horrible beauty, magic of life. You have to, when you, when you exercise your eyes, you will be, you will surprise how much you we don't see. You will surprise, like, I, you will not surprise if football player run for three times faster than you, right? It's normal, they are fast. Same with filmmaker. I can tell you, I can see 10 times more than normal people. And I can prove it. So, because I'm just doing it, I'm just looking. I can tell you what you have at breakfast. Because just one look, enough for me to know, I can tell everything about you, mostly, mostly correct. And this is because of my job, to see. My job is to see and to see beauty and to see horrible things, unfortunately. It's like life without skin. Like you can be five times a day in love, <laughs> fall in love and five times five a day you want to kill yourself because you see everything. You see beauty of life, beauty of people and horrible things about life. But why we are doing films, you ask in the first place. This was your first question, why I'm doing documentary. Because this is the only way I'm happy. Do you understand? I just, I'm, I'm happy when I'm filming. I'm not, of course I might be happy when I kiss woman or I talk to my kids or I, I might be also happy. But for real, when I'm happy, when I'm filming. When I see in my monitor, my, my viewfinder, when I see something you never seen yet, and I know that in this moment, I'm only one who sees this, only one. And I know how to move my camera, then you will cry later. And this is most beautiful part of my life. Of course, in medicine as well, if you, if you know how to connect, two, three, four shots together, then 
then you are happy. You said filmmaking is something that has to be radical to you. What do you mean by radical and what is radicality to you? And also radical is very easy. I don't think we have to do films. I don't think no I, I believe no one needs our film, right? I only believe uh, you I always say uh, you have to do films only if you cannot live without it. If you can do something else, just don't do films, you know. It's just really important point for me, because if you want to make movie to teach me something, don't do it. Don't think you are so important. Come on, <laughs> people live without you, without your lessons. You, uh, you have to find what I give you advice if you love me. It's very stupid advice, but don't forgive me to be pathetic. What I would say is, what I'm trying to do, I'm trying to find co-writer which is not a human. Someone could say it's God, someone could say destiny, someone could say it's Evolution, some, I don't know. I'm trying to make movies which not everything belongs to me. And there are a huge part of unpre unpredictable things. And for example, I, was, I made a movie about people who were born with me in the same day. So I just decided to find everyone who were born in St. Petersburg, same day, same year as I was born. And that time it was no internet, no uh, any Google <laughs> possibility. I spent four years, literally, just working in the city, St. Petersburg, uh, to archive, to hospitals, then knocking door by door. And I found 50 boys and 51 girls who were born in the same day with me in St. Petersburg. And then I just wanted to show their faces. And then, of course, Russian press said, oh, he doesn't like Russia, he's very critical. Look, he chose such poor people. Uh, he chose people not happy, not successful. I did not. I did not. They were born with me. When Do you understand? It's not me. It's, it happened. It happened, they're born. So it kind of, I have co-writer, which is not me. I just, this is what I'm looking always for something like, uh, uh, I'm looking for someone else, more than me. And I'm trying to use camera in a way that, for example, in Gunda, I thought, why not to use camera in a way that it's supposed to be used? What I mean is to show people something they normally don't see. They normally don't see, or they don't want to see, as I said. If you say you're looking for the unpredictable, um, watching Aquarella, I had a lot um, of thoughts about play and about challenging something you cannot control and about the, the play with the uncontrollable. And um, you now mentioned the film about the people and you moved away from human beings towards nature and towards sort of I, I explained to you like uh, we I believe maybe it's my um, maybe it's my way to you know we we made so many films can you imagine we are now in the film in this Berlinale was admitted 10,000 films 10,000 films which means 10,000 people believe they made a great movie because if you made a movie and you I see some first, I, I, I can see some directors here. I, I, I see few I know, and they did not submit. And when I ask them, why didn't you? They say, no, my movie is not good enough. So 10,000 people believe they made a good movie. Can you imagine how many movies we produce then? Between 30 and 50,000 a year. Who needs all of this? Who just needs, who needs this, right? So, my point is, if we continue this way, 
we will, it's just pollution, right? It's, it, it is intellectual pollution. That's why I'm saying, I believe that every project must be just unique. Just unique. Stop, I would say stop making stories. Too much stories, too many stories, just make unique movie, unique, like no one else can do, only you, and no one else, and in terms of subject, in terms of form, but this is only half of it. This is only half of thing. All critics, if you read, what they're writing, read book, read critics today of, of Berlinale, what they're writing about? They're writing about subject, about story. Isn't it boring? Only 10% writing about form. And no one writes about the reason why we are making movies. So 90% writing about story. 10% writing about form. But none of them writing about why we are making movies. It's not about story and it's not about form. It's but about combination of this story with this form. I was about to say, it's an the reason with yeah. the, and the form one thing. Yeah, and this, this is a unique combination of this story with this particular form, which will give you unbelievable something unique. And no one even notices about it. No one critics, I've been reading every day, no one speak about it. What is this? So what I'm saying is, uh, I'm radical, you say, yes, I'm radical, because if we will continue this way, intellectual pollution even more horrible than pollution. Because then one day people will say, come on, by the way, all of this what we are doing, we are spending on not our monies, right? Most of us, right? Only a few of us are spending our own money. So someone pay for our uh, 50,000 films a year. Mostly people who live uh, and have different... So if, if, if I want... To, what, what I want you to, as a young filmmaker, I think filmmaking is responsibility. I think camera is a gun. I think camera is a huge tool you can change life of people. I think you have to be responsible for... You kind of... What you do, you say, I'm taking 90 minutes of your life. Come here to see my movie. And on top of it, I ask you to pay for it twice. First, like a taxpayer, and second, as one who wants to buy a ticket. And, and you do it, and then I ask you to give me 90 minutes of your life, of your only life. So if I just tell you a story, fuck me. But Victor, I mean, there's obviously, um, there's a lot of pollution, like literal pollution, then there's a lot of content being produced, there's a lot of different form, formal stuff being produced. But don't you think people have the cap capacity and um, capability to select and to have a really, you know, elaborate and selective mind? And then I was wondering, within this range of topics and unique um, combinations of form and things that draw you somewhere, how do you make your decisions, you know? Is it just things you stumble upon in their uniqueness? Because obviously I think there must be a motivation, for example, with Gunda, but also with Aquarella, um, where something moves you in a certain way and how does it move you and why? I will unite it with the first question just before, because you said why I move from human to, to water or to animals, because we live in a kind of humanism era, right? And we believe the human is the center of everything. Like, and these 50,000 films we are doing, 99.9% .9 is about us. Oh, do you love me? You love me. Why don't you love me? Why you don't love me no more? Love me more. Oh, she doesn't love me. This is what we are doing. This is what we are doing, one after another, one film after another, one film after another, again and again, again and again. 
And what we don't talk about, we are killers. Yes? Yes. We are still, we are we, able to steal, we are able to cheat, we are able to torture, we are able to create beauty, we are able to create fantastic intellectual stuff. But we are not only one in this planet. And yesterday was my premiere, and or not today, and I said maybe something shocking to people. I said, in the first page of Bible there is mistake, because in the first page of Bible written, so first day God made uh, light and darkness, then earth and water, then plants and then animals, and then God made human to rule all of this. And this is wrong. This is simply wrong. Why? Why we have to, why we are the ones who has to rule it? Why? So, and this is how we behave. We behave as everything made for us. All this planet, all this, if we need to kill animal, we don't think twice, right? Yesterday, my president of my country signed the uh, sign the order, we can now in Russia kill, uh, 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 hunt in Valiers. What is this? This is the most horrible thing human can do, to put animals in the cage and shoot them with super modern guns. Is it, is it what we are for here on this planet? I don't know. And this is, you want to film about us? You love me or you don't love me? Let's make, I believe, guys, believe me. Maybe I'm wrong. Again, don't listen to me. What everything I'm saying, crap, crap. What I'm saying to you now, good filmmaker, bad filmmaker is thinking about what is understandable. Good filmmaker is making films about what is not understand, what is impossible to understand. If you understand something, forget it. It's done. If you, if you have story, forget it immediately. Go there when you don't know. Go there you do not understand. Go there, film something can change you, first of all, not others, which can change your life. So when I was filming Aquarella, I became a different person. When I was filming Antipodes, I, I became a different person. And now when I film Gunda, I'm just a different person. And not because I wanted to change you. I know, but I'm a different person now. I'm happier. I'm happier because I know I'm not alone and I'm not an important part of the planet. Everyone has the same rights to be here. We are, be, we are killing one billion pigs a year. Come on. We are killing 50 billion chicken a year, people. Half billion cow a year. We are killing, not million, billion. We are fucking killers. And we agree not to think about it. Just look. Yeah, we are nice. We are good people. We are beautiful. We're creating stuff, we're making movies. Look to this hall, look to this, those slums. How beautiful we are. We are fucking killers. And we, everything, even when we talk about global warming, what we are talking about? We are not talking about planet. We are talking that someone, that if the climate change will destroy our comfort. This is what we worry. We worry that some people will have to move to another cities. Come on, isn't it a problem? So, what I'm trying to say. Uh, do movies if you, if it makes you happy and you cannot stop yourself. If you cannot stop yourself, like every, what, then when you have ideas, try to stop it. This is my recommendation. I have a good idea every week, 
but I don't do this. I don't do movies because no one needs 51,000 films a year. <laughs> so I'm trying not to do it. I only do it when I cannot stop myself, when it's just burning my mind and my heart. Then I, then I go for it. And can I tell you one more thing? It's very tough what I will say. Don't do movies for money. Don't do movies for fame. Don't do movies for, say, world. All these roads goes to hell. Do you remember there was a film of Tarkovsky, Stalker? Did you see it? And do you remember the final? If you didn't see it, I will tell you, like, shortly. So, three guys go into the kind of, let's say it was a nuclear or something, it was a nuclear reactor, and then something happened, and uh, uh, there is a humor that if you go inside one particular room and ask, talk, pronounce in that room what you, what you, something what you want happen to your life, it will happen. So three guys travel in there, and they have a stalker who guides them there. And then in the end, no one, no, no, no one of them came inside. And the reason is they realize that what will happen is not what they will ask. What will happen, what exactly they want inside. And I'm telling you now, I'm almost 60, and I start making, I came to cinema when I was 17. I'm telling you, this is correct. In my eyes, there were so many great, talented people in the beginning. We were fighting. I remember when we were like 20 years old, we were fighting in Subway, who is better, Tarkovsky, Bergman, or Fellini. We were just fighting like, <laughs> like idiots. <laughs> and now I know what happened to those people when, who were growing with me. And I'm telling you, it sounds tough, but it's true. That's why I'm warning you. If you came to make movie because you want to be famous, you're gonna be famous. If you, want, if you came here to make money, you will have money. If you came here to be close to power, you will do it, you will, you will succeed. But if you came here to make movie, this is the really beautiful path. And those people, most of them, they are rich, famous, and they do shit. Do this job only because you really respect art, respect cinema. Be, be like server, like just, just do it because this is more important than you. And if you want to have money or fame, then you're gonna be punished in there. Don't do this, guys. Don't do it. I would like to go two steps back um, about you saying um, making films about something that is bigger than us and about nature. And um, I'd like us to watch two more clips, if that's fine. Um, I'm, changing, I'm changing something, so we would like to watch clip three and the very last clip, because I find it quite striking what different approaches you choose in Vaquarela and Gunda. Shall, shall we just go to the last clip? Because, or you, up, up to you, because I guess people are rather talk than... Then watch clips? Um, Let's do the, the no, no, let's do the middle, like the number three and number six, yeah. And then we'll, in, we'll invite you into the conversation. You want to, you want to give them a chance? To yeah, um, I, just, um, I just wanted to make one comment, which was um, the brutality when human beings come in, basically, that you mentioned before. 
and the damage that is really um, really strong in this very last shot. And yeah, I'd like to use the last half an hour uh, to invite you into the conversation. We do have an audience mic that can be thrown around. It comes from the back. There's a very first question here on the right. Um, and it's like a ball, just, I guess you know the system already. Uh, yes, so first of all, thank you for Gunda. Um, watching it made me uh, feel very alive. <laughs> and uh, I felt that, that the movie was made from love. And I wanted to ask you, I, I had stopped eating meat, then I started eating meat again, and then I watched Gunda. And I think I'm going to stop <laughs> eating meat again. But I think it's different when someone is telling you, you have to uh, be aware of animal rights, etc. But when you see it from, from love, uh, it really made me, I, I think I won't forget, or I don't want to forget this, the scene when one of the pigs is drinking uh, the rain water. It's so beautiful. And I wanted to ask you, what do you think is the place for, for love in, in our current situation? Or when you make a movie, do you think it's important? Uh, that's, I guess, my question. A good one, good one, good question, thank you. So actually, uh, mm, it was many films about animals and, and about our relations with them. And uh, it was many films made in slaughtery houses and with blood and with everything. And in my opinion, they didn't do job. So you can show as much as you want, as cruel we are. People don't want to see it. People don't want to see it. People just block. And this is why I did not film many of this uh, episode. I just wanted to to film them as they are. And and uh, in the end, it was like 15 minutes. What she's, she's running like this, 15 minutes alone. And then in the end, she it was no one around, only us only camera and me and and she came to me just and she looked to the camera like talking to me almost talking to me like what fuck are you doing to me so and then she she just left her house and kind of hopeless to talk and you cannot miss this uh, uh, i mean you cannot translate this her look differently she just talked to you exactly what I just said. And, um, and you're right, it was a, a decision to just to give them chance. I, I said when the beginning what I wrote, uh, it was a short treatment um, and I wrote, I will film her if I will film any person with full respect, with distance, give you privacy with best lens possible camera, a possible technique, and as if I film most beautiful person in the world. And yeah, and you're right, it's just, um, you know, when I was filming this last one, and she came to me, and she looked at me like in, in like one meter distance, she looked just to my eyes, I start crying. I just crying. I was filming and I start crying and I realized I cannot stop crying. Because it was just a moment when and it was actually it was moment of truth of life and truth of cinema. Because I knew and I was not only crying because of because of feeling sorry for her or feeling guilt for myself or for us, but also because of beauty of cinema. I remember 30 years ago, I made my first movie and even more, it was more than 30 years ago. And uh, then I was making film about philosopher and he died and um, it's a very radical again movie, and he died, and uh, it was a funeral. And 
do you, you remember how grave looks like, right? You unfortunately remember how it looks like. So you see the grave. So I was staying, it was a grave, and people, in Russia it's a little bit less, um, less mechan. it's like more people do it with hands and with, uh, so it's just not electronic anything, so no lifts and so on. So uh, they, they move it down, and they then, then, then people start putting us there on the gray, on the on the coffin, and I was staying there, and actually, I start filming, and I said I will film like twenty second or ten second because I was, uh, I, I was, uh, it was not enough footage. I I, I mean I, I didn't have enough film, so I said I I, I allowed myself to film ten second, maybe twenty maximum. So then I saw the the coffin, and then I saw the ashes uh, falling and covering the coffin. And then I saw it's coming closer. So I already don't see coffin, and then it's the earth is kind of dancing and coming closer to me. And then I realized I cannot stop. I cannot stop camera. So it was something magic, like in front of my eyes. So now be careful what I will tell you. This is how people see and how cameras see, okay? So, so um, probably, you un, probably you know what is funeral, right? Probably you have been. So what you see, you see, you see, let's say this is the grave, you see people around, you see trees around, you see birds probably. Oh. So then you choose where to look, where to look. You can see grave, five seconds, then you look to relatives or to wife or kids or whatever, to your friends, then you look to the tree, whatever. You choose yourself. But camera, camera did something different. Camera starts filming this, and I thought I will film this, 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 this. But something happened to me. So I was filming, and suddenly I saw this strange dance of us coming closer, 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 closer. And just then it was like in two minutes, it was in the surface of the, and it was already in the surface. And then it started growing above surface. And it was Russian camera. And Russian cameras has only, like, in the end of the Russian camera, it makes such strange noise, like, <laughs> like it tells you that in 20 seconds, uh, the film will be gone. So I realize I have only 20 seconds, and I need to finish this shot. Just to stop it, then it's not fun. It's like, I mean, then it's not a then it's just long shot, right? So what I did, so I was filming like this, then I start moving slowly close to the, so the ash was growing, and I start moving closer, and then, then I make closer, and then I make it in a way that I already saw I saw it in different perspective. I saw it's falling already, not growing, but it already was here, falling, like waterfall, but earth, right? And then one moment, next earth was just close, just close my camera to the full black. So, sounds simple, but you have to make it while shooting. You cannot think before, and you have to invent it, how you do it and what you do, when the moment you are filming. And then someone made a photo of me doing this. Someone made a photo of me, and I, and I saw this photo recently, and I saw me full of tears. And of course, my journalist wrote, oh, he was crying because the, his teacher, 94 years, philosopher, died. It's true, but not only. 
I was crying because I knew what, I was fi what I'm filming now, no one ever seen before. It was 100% cinema, 100%. So it was 94 years old man, long, long life. He told me all his, he told me his, his story. And this is the shot which ends of, the, of this film and his life in a way. And this is only, so this is I'm coming back to the beginning. So I was, I was crying because I lost my friend and I was crying because I was happy that what I just doing now is an unbelievable, beautiful piece of cinema. Do, do, does it make sense for you? Thank you for question. Would you move it on to the front end? Um, my question is, you, you said you go to the understandable, not understandable, because you can't control it, because you don't know where to go, so you go there, um, however you go there. After the film, if a film finishes for you, maybe it will always be there and unfinished and a part of you, but after the movie, would you say you understood or do you still not understand what you made a film about? <laughs> it's a good one. Because, you know, there is a... Do you know what, who is Newton? <laughs> you know who is Newton. Not everyone knows. I, I asked once in the US. Uh, not many people knew it. So, I, so if you know who is Newton, um, he wrote... Um, at least there is a legend. He said it. He said, so... He said, uh, the world is ocean, and I know only the drop. I only know drop, right? This is what, and this was only a thing I wrote about aquarella, that uh, the world is ocean, and I know only drop of it. And he, Newton said it in the end of his life. And I, this is what starting point of my movie. This is kind of, this is how I start. And then I made a movie, and I can tell you, we do not know even drop. We don't know even drop. So more you study, you more surprised. How unbelievable this all, unbelievable and endless. And you, yeah. and this is sort of ridiculous for me that we are always putting ourselves in, in the top of everything. Like even a simple cow, like cow. You think cow is stupid? Haha, <laughs> stupid. If cow are no, like imagine you have 100 cows and they know that seven o'clock they will get water. So they all day go around. At seven o'clock sharp, they will come for water. Sharp, seven o'clock, zero, zero. They don't have any watch, they know. So how, how they know? They're stupid. Just keep, just, for example, I made a movie about pig oh, now, but I also made a movie about kid who never seen himself in a mirror. To understand how crazy I am, I will tell you. So, when my son was born, I decided to close all mirrors in my apartment and even change spoons for plastic that he doesn't see himself in any reflection. Then I, when I was walking on the street, I was walking two steps ahead to be sure he didn't see himself in any reflection, in any car, in any uh, window. When he was two, I came with a mirror and I started filming here. What have he? Find out himself in the mirror. And it took him 30 minutes before he understood it's him. 30 minutes. By the way, very intelligent boy, but 30 minutes. And understand also the principle of reverse perspective, as mirror is, right? So mirror is when mirror is left, right, wrongly, right? Where is left, it's right. And so for us it's obvious, like left, mirror, mirror. We know it's like now. 
But if you've never seen it before, you need time to understand. And it took him 30 minutes. When I was filming Piglet, they need just one look to understand this. Just one look. I didn't include it to the film because it's another film. I, but I made it. I put mirror and I make it in a way that I can... So they need one look to understand its reverse perspective. Just for you to know that we... For example, we recorded this peak. And this noise of... Okay. It looks like the same. Not at all. Not at all. We recorded it with different speed. And then we put it in computer. And we found at least 300 different words. And we check it in different situations. She used exactly different words in different situations. And we were so paranoid in documentary filmmakers that even in some situation, it was like someone said something from the crew or I was making noise or saying something to, to my crew. So sometimes I overlap with her words. And then we have to replace. And I said, choose this one. It sounds beautiful. And, and my son went, no, 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 we cannot use this because she's saying something else here. <laughs> So at least 300 words we recognize, but we cannot recognize because her diapason is 12 times more or so. Between, I don't know, we cannot even calculate more that her diapason between seven and 12 times bigger than human diapason of voice. So it's just for you to know, we, we believe we know, we don't, we don't. Is there another question, comment? in the very back there. You can actually throw, throw it. Oops. <laughs> Thanks. Um, thank you very much for your work. I've seen most of it, I guess. Um, you are talking about the emotions overwhelming you during the, during the filming and the material being like much bigger than you than you are as a person, just a human being. And my question is pretty simple. How you deal with those things when you understand, when you start crying, when you kind of, when you actually kind of lose control of what is going on. And um, on the opposite side, you are supposed to be a director of, of, the, of the happening. Um, did I make it clear or is it like, yeah, I, I will try. It's a difficult one. I, you can add to it later. Hmm. What I'm trying to do when I'm shooting, I'm trying to imagine that you are watching. This is an important thing. I'm trying to imagine, when I'm shooting, I'm trying to always imagine that you are watching. And I'm always asking myself, are you going to give me a chance? And I, are you going to watch it or you will switch off? Or you will leave? i always asking myself. So when I'm filming now, if I film like this, I will ask myself, will you watch it? With such amount of movies around you, will you watch it? So many films. Why you have to watch this boring shot now? Unless roof will collapse and rain will come just here, and you will like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Then it's something heavy. But, but in experience I have, I always know where to put camera. I don't know why I know. I just don't know. If you will put camera here, nothing will happen. If I will put camera here, it will really fall. The, the, the ceiling will fall. I don't know why. It just... It's just something wrong with me. For example, I live here in round corner. I live here round corner. And I used, I, once I made film in St. Petersburg just from my window. And it happens that during one year, uh, the, the, the water 
system was broken just there like on the street and it came out and, and f f the street was full of water and seven times during the year they came to fix it. And then people say, fuck, he probably paid them to, bro to make it wrong that it will... I didn't touch them, I didn't, <laughs> I didn't talk to them, it just happened before. And now I live here in Berlin and I want to make sequel <laughs> because, but I don't do it, you know why? In, in front of my window, there is a stress, and people do it, pan, pankur, how do you call it, pan, pankur? The, yeah, they're jumping, you know. They, and quite dangerous, like, every time I look, I like kids, like little kids and, and old people, the, all of them are jumping. And it's unbelievable dangerous. They, I don't, I, I, Germans are very strange people, like, really, I respect them, because, Imagine mom, mom sitting with dad. They came together, all family, mom, dad, and kid. And then mom and dad sitting, chatting with phone, don't even watch what kids are doing. And kids are doing crazy shit, <laughs> jumping like hell. And I afraid even to look, because I say, if I look, some of them will fly, uh, fall and break his neck. I really say. So I just, I just do like this. And, Someone say, film, film. I say, no, I cannot. If I put camera, it will be something wrong here. It will be something happen. So what I'm saying is, camera is a really tool. I don't know, it, it makes this strange magic to connect. Um, does it make sense to you? <laughs> don't make the room collapse, please. Yeah, 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 I'm trying, that's what I'm saying. I'm, I'd rather not to feel much, you know. <laughs> um, is there another question or a comment? Idea? No? Wow, you don't want to ask anything, good. There's one in the front here. <laughs> Hi, um, I am making a film about animals as well. Um, but whenever I talk to some producers over here, they will uh, misunderstand it with the National Geographic kind of thing. Um, so I don't know how to like pitch it. I'm very bad at pitching, so I don't know. Yeah, I'm very bad at pitching. I understand this problem because uh, it was almost impossible to finance it. It was impossible to finance it. And what helped me... Uh, I will not tell you a story how we finance it because it was ridiculous, stupid. Uh, the, by luck, my producer just took a risk and we start filming it without money. And when we film first episode, peak episode, then everyone was sure it's, there is a movie. But what helped me in this case, I take color out. I made it black and white. And when you see black in color uh, piglets, they are adorable. Like, oh, it's so adorable. Like, and then one national geography comes. You just put voiceover on the top of it, or Attenborough, or beautiful, any other voice, and you have beautiful national geography. But if you take out color, you see the personality of pig. You don't see it's like pig, piglet, any piglet. No, you see from the first second, you see that like they're born and from the first second you see one of them are shy and one are aggressive, one is shifty, one is sneaky, one is with sense of humor. You see in the first second. And then I was filming them three times during two, two months and it's like this, from the first second you see they're different. They have their own personality and and of course, um, so, yeah, this is what helped me. I, I made the risk, I filmed it without money, and then I took out color, and when, then I show how it looks like. And then people understood, wow, it's something they never seen before, right? But it's really fun, difficult. I financed Aquarella for years. I was not able to finance. I was not able to finance. Even, even I'm sorry to say, with, even with my kind of, not uh, kind of, 
I mean, I'm a little bit known, right? And still, I was not able four years to finance it. But what, what, is, what, what is wrong with me, and maybe this is for some of you is a help, what I will say now. What's wrong with me, I don't give up. I don't give up. I, was, I knew I'm going to make it. I was four years without money and without job. And I was living in doubt, like in, in total debt. I was just living, like Sakurov gave me money, like other friends gave me money just to survive. And I knew I will make it. I knew I will, I, I'm going to make it. So, and I did not do any job for money in between. So I said, no, I don't do it. I will focus and I will make my movie. So I tell you, you are talented. As you are here, you are talented. Believe me, it's not enough. I have seen many talented people, much more talented than me, much more talented than me, and they did nothing in life. They did nothing. Talent is good, but focus. Focus. Dedicate your life to this. Just give your life to this. Then it will work. Don't, 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 don't mix your life with anything else. Just you say, to you, say to yourself, I am just slave of art, and I do whatever to make it, and then you will make it. I have seen many talented people, people. I have seen great people who never did a thing. One title might be maximum. And keep in mind, there is no filmmaker who made more than five good films. There is no one in the world, in all history of cinema. So better not to make 20, and 15 bad, better to have five but good. There is nothing more dangerous than bad film in your filmography because you cannot cut it out. It will be always in your filmography. You made a bad movie. So think five times before you start. And in, especially if you do documentary, even worse, like because in documentary, contents are important. Sometimes, you know, like some people do propaganda film. Then just forget it, just never do take camera again. Just do propaganda and don't call yourself filmmaker. But don't forget, it's something. Yeah, it's more important than you believe. It's more important. Just trust me. I, I told you in the beginning, don't listen to me. In this point, listen to me. In this point, listen to me. <laughs> B believe me. There is nothing more important than clean filmography. You made a movie and you don't want to delete one film from your filmography. This, then you are a happy man. So be careful what you do. Okay, I can she's see. tough one. Yeah, she will ask first, something spicy. And then I know. Two more up there. Um, so, first row here. Just throw it to your colleague over there. <laughs> After this part, which was very, very serious, I found, I want to ask you actually about a sense of humor that you have in your films, because I found this like beautiful is what I like the most, which I liked from the beginning. And if you plan this, or if you think about that while you're doing your films, and how important this for you. And the second thing, according that you write in your movies with someone which is bigger than you, how you actually dealing with the scripts or something that you have to give the people who give you money? How is it? Like a short version of that. Thing. Okay. Uh, yeah. This person is always asking me most toughest questions. Uh, good ones again. Um, sense of humor. I am f actually not funny in my life. In, in, in real life, I have no sense of humor, unfortunately. 
And uh, I'm quite stupid, like, but in cinema, somehow it works. And, and this is, by the way, good, this is, by the way, good, good example, that in cinema, if you are really doing it, you are better than you are. Do you understand what I mean? It just, I know many good filmmakers. For example, I know Nobel Prize writers, few. They do mistake in spelling. In the language they got Nobel Prize, believe me. I know filmmakers who never been in Hermitage all over. And they are considered like good filmmakers. I know filmmakers like you don't want to drink tea together. Like awful people. But when you watch movies, they're like brilliant. So when you do, like, if like you see dancer and you just say, how it possible? How it, you don't need to, when you will talk to this guy, you probably will be disappointed. I know a few composers top of the line of this planet. If you talk to them, you say, have it possible? I come to them, one of them lives close to here, just around the corner. She just, go, uh, uh, you know, there are a few super talented people in this, uh, just top of the world. So I came to her recently, composer, and I didn't believe I am talking to composer. Just everything, like a lot of sounds like hell, like everything, uh, the, the, her refrigerator is noisy, like so everything, like coffee machine making stupid noise, like everything around, like, even her door is just broken and everything, like, and you think, what is this? Is it like composer? No? So, but when she make music, you just frozen, like, you frozen. When she just take, when she came to piano, I was frozen, you know? So, uh, when you do exactly what you have to do in life, if you found the place you are, you will be much better than you are. You will be much better. You will be more clever, more tender, more intelligent, more human, more everything, if you're doing the right thing. So, I'm stupid, I have no sense of humor. But my films are funny, right? That's true, that's true. Many of them are considered like comedy. But in life, I'm, I never ha I made one good joke. So about screenwriting, when I, was, I would say screenwriting is difficult part because I'm, I was actually, the, my education was original first of all. I was screenwriter. And uh, we had crazy education. We, I was, it was one guy, uh, I don't know, you probably don't know him. He was not famous in, outside of Russia at all. His name was Balabanov, and we were uh, living in the same room in film school, and like in the same in, in student, uh, student house, how do you call Not hotel, but like, we are, li we are sharing a room together, and we are sharing class. We are uh, two people in the class, and we are two years, Every day, by, just we spend like almost 24 hours, two years together. And uh, our education was very simple. We were watching four times a day, four films a day, in the big screen. And we were writing full length script every week. Every single week. 90 minutes script. Fiction, documentary, it doesn't matter. So 100 pages every week. After I finished this, I never wrote more than two pages. <laughs> I never wrote more than two pages in my life. None of my script I wrote. So what I decided to do, I decided to do essential, like crucial, crucial lines that, that I can, and, but this is, so, you must write something, people will not stop reading. And then you must write something, they have to call you. They have to call and say, what? They have to call you, what, what next, what next? You have to do it in a way that they want to. But in documentary, what 
if, if what I'm doing called documentary. Most important is editing. I will teach you now fast in one minute how to edit great movie. Be ready, just one minute, okay? Try when you will come home, try this, and you will be happier than, than before because I was editor for five years and I edited a lot of good films, a lot of famous films, but when I start edit, I start doing it differently. My system is opposite from normal people do. If you need 90 minutes film, 99.9% .9 of filmmakers, if he needs 90 minutes film, he will make rough cut in three hours film. Then he will cut it to two and a half hours to two hours and then to 90 minutes. I do it totally opposite. If I need 90 minutes film, I do 30 minutes film first. And I do it fast in one day. How I do it? I know my footage and I choose only shots which are unbelievable, crucial for this movie. And with those shots, this film will never exist. Never. So I just choose these shots first. So then I have, let's say, 10 shots. And then what I do, I put them in order. In this order, or this order, or this order, I, I'm, I'm playing with this only 30 minutes. And I'm putting all these shots in different order. And I see what kind of different films I'm getting if I put them in different order. So what I'm doing actually, I'm not spending time of editing, losing time for editing episode and ta 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 ta. No. First I do, I'm searching for movie which is inside my footage, not what is inside my brain. Because what is inside your brain, what is inside your ideas in the first place, it's nothing to do most of the time with footage you have. The footage you have is some t most of the time give you a totally different movie for some reason. Maybe it was windy, maybe sun came wrong moment, maybe, 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 maybe. Or maybe focus puller made mistake and, and it became different shot. So forget about when you come with footage, when you start edit, forget about what you thought, forget it. Not search in your film, in your footage, film you wanted to do. For, not. Search in your footage, the film exists there. Not in you, what you wanted, but what is there. Because what is there, I will read as viewer. But if you search in what is not there, <laughs> then it will have a problem, right? So forget about what you wanted, search what is there. And then from what is there, Make this crucial 30 minutes and then put them in different order, a few times, like five different films, 30, five different films from this 30 minutes. And then you will see three, five different movies. And then choose the movie you want. Because if you change position of shots, it can change completely meaning of your film. Then you just need to spread them in 90 minutes and put something in between in order to prepare that those shots working better. Like something must be before this shot must be something that this shot more stronger. What I made, how I made it in, Gunther made for one week, for one week. Even people think, no, impossible, one week. Uh, another thing, I, another tip I give you. When you edit movie, imagine, I imagine like 10 people, sometimes it's seven, sometimes it's 10, who is sitting behind you. Like imagine you are editing. Imagine I'm sitting here and I'm editing and this is my screen and I'm editing. 
And I know behind me there are people. We choose them concrete people. Like, con like you know who is watching you. Like it could be Chaplin. What I do, I know like I like my friend Sakurov. There is my pol uh, neighbor policeman who hates me. For some reason, I don't know why. I, my mom, who is dead already, unfortunately, but I'm still talking to you, to her. I have seven, sometimes ten people every day in my editing room. I have people who is editing with me. And I'm trying to do, they are totally different people. And I'm trying to do film in a way that all of them will watch to the end. Not only my friend Sakurov, no. Even those, that, that policeman who hates me. I have to make something that he's gonna watch to the end. Think like this. Think that you, that you are not talking to people who adore you or who trust you. You are talking to people who just ignore you. So, this is two things you can, if you, if you keep it in mind, then it will help. Does it make sense to you? There were two more questions in the back, if you could maybe pass on the microphone in the very middle. Thank you for the editing, really, so extraordinary advice. So I, I, I may have another shallow question on the camera working on the set. Like, it seems, uh, because I know that you often do, like hold the camera on the own by yourself, and holding the camera and doing film is so personal, because it's, it's so magical, only you know that in 20 seconds the camera will be stopped. But I want to ask, in case that sometimes life push you to work with a, another camera cinematographer, and how would you choose the cinematographer to work with and how you will work on the set so that the personal and the magical stuff will be as the soul you want to convey in the shot by the hand of the cinematographer. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, my proposal to you, it's very connected to previous question. There are people who not edit themselves. They are directors, but they do not edit. For me, it's problematic. I cannot give editing to someone else. I always, I always think, oh, imagine I'm a painter, and I can give a brush to someone else and just tell him, do this. There are such painters, most famous now in the planet, who is, let's say, most trendy and most, most richest painters of the world, they don't do their job. Like, you, like Dolce Gabbana, they don't do, there are industry behind, there are machine behind, right? And filmmakers, they mo most of them, they don't edit themselves. For me, I can't, I, I have to. Because when I, when I edit, I really can find something which I cannot imagine. We, I cannot imagine before, when only when you edit and, and so same with camera. For me, it was difficult to dedicate camera to someone else for a few reasons. My first film, I was sharing camera with Georgi Rerberg, who was a cameraman for Tarkovsky in Miro. So, so after making first movie as a student with Tarkovsky cameraman, <laughs> for me, it was very difficult to find someone in such level who, and that's why I slowly, most of my films are made camera myself. Only, mostly because it's quite difficult to exactly your point have. So my, 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 my way of filmmaking is 
to search for unpredictable moment, to search something unique and you don't know what will happen and react fast in that moment when you are filming, as exactly I explained to you this funeral episode. So, and it will be stupid for me just to come to, if someone else is doing it, just so say to him, listen camera, you have to send down, like go down, go down and achieve that camera, this will close your lens. It's just, it's so intuitive, it's so, so, but, Last two movies, I start sharing cameras with Aquarela. I shared it with Ben Benhart, and with Gunda. I made it with Egil Larson. Who? The reason I invited him, because he was perfect steady, steady cam man. Like, like really, I saw his job. And if you ever need steady cam, choose my guy. It's, he's just brilliant. But what I, what my technique is. I, I'm giving them headphones, like, I, so, and I have microphone. And I am just talking to them, mostly about, I see monitor, and I see what they're doing. And what I'm saying is to them, for example, he was filming Peak. What I was telling to him all the time, I was saying like this, look how she is beautiful. Look how beautiful she is. Look how beautiful she is. And like, I, I wanted him to every second to see her uniqueness. So each of you unique, right? But I can make you horrible or beautiful. I will make trick for you now. <laughs> Is the room gonna collapse? Is the room gonna collapse now? Nah? So I will show you two photos. Let me give you a mic. I will show you two photos, just made. It's my photo, my, myself. This is number one. You see it? You more or less you see it, right? You can imagine. All right? What do you see? Can you describe it? What, who is it? If you don't know me, who is this guy? Um, I you would, don't know me. Yeah, okay. And I would say that a bit tired, tired a lot, and kind of arrogant. <laughs> um. You're joking, she's always... Yeah, okay. Let's say he is a little bit intelligent and uh, <laughs> beautiful. <laughs> Let's do it this way, right? So, and this is another one. Oops, where is another one? It must be another one. Where is another one? Did you delete it? So, strangely, it disappeared. So, let me, let me try. Let me try again. I will do another photo, and you will describe what you see, okay? What do you say? Uh, I can see someone, half a face, not really there. You see someone, peak, very fat, like bourgeois, stupid. It's the same person. Very same person, very same moment. So, I can film you. And I can make you most brilliant man in the planet, and all girls will love you, or I can film you that even your mom will hate you. <laughs> and this is only using camera. This is only one tool from hundreds which what filmmaker is using. 
This is only knowing where to put camera. Like this or like this. This is only one of hundreds, hundreds secrets of filmmaking. So, filmmaking is a huge, 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 unbelievable, serious, complex job. Complex job. Needs everyday training, everyday study, every single minute you have, look, exercise your eyes, every free hour, go to museum. Every single day you have free time. Read huge books. Huge books. Filmmaking is a huge, unbelievable, complex job. I'm still learning. I'm still learning how to do it. So, camera, just using camera, just knowing how to use camera, you can give totally different impression of what you are filming. Totally different. And you don't need to speak about it. You don't need voiceover. You don't need story. Just by using camera and knowing how to use it, you can express totally different things. Does it make sense to you? Victor, thank you so much um, for giving us an insight on your approach to nonfiction, on your nonfictional poems that we could have a look at and on answering all the questions. We unfortunately have to stop here and now. So please give another warm applause to Viktor Kozakowski. One more word, one more word, one more. As far as we are running out of time. You are talented. First of all, it's not enough. Second. Don't do good films, people. No one needs good films. Do unbelievable great films, unique films. Have a lovely last day with uh, Bellinale Talents and um, enjoy the rest of your afternoon. Thank you. Thank you.